Pan-African multinational energy company Oendo made a big move and brought Conco Phillips uh, Nigerian unit for 1.79 billion US dollars. That was in December last year. Company deals mainly in uh, oil explorations. It's also listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange uh, in July. Uh, they are focusing on continuing their growth. And Bronwyn Nielsen caught up with the CEO of Oendo, Wale Tunubu, for more. Yes, it's uh, certainly a big part of our strategy. Uh, there is a substantial reserve base in the country um, and in the region in general, mostly uh, being produced by offshore companies. So as they switch their portfolio and uh, move into the deep offshore, we are swimming up the land and swamp assets. That's an important part of our strategy. Looking at Nigeria in general, there are a number of emerging oil companies that are coming into being and they've got the capacity to export internationally. Really, it's Africans growing Africa. Is that a theme set to continue? Certainly. I mean, I think the indigenous participation is extremely important on the continent. The days when we could sit back and wait for foreign investors to come in um, is, is far over because the whole world has opened up. Capital will flow to whatever destination is most attractive is in terms of terms, quality of labor force, quality of the enabling environment. So the soft infrastructure has to be right. And having local partners who can, who can, who are indigenous based partners, who do have the skill set and the capacity to create um, enterprises to support not just um, the, ben the benefits of foreign investors, but also to run businesses on their own is critical. I mean, Africa really needs to be developed henceforth by Africans. What about the potential of Africa as a key oil producing region, given the investments that we're seeing into oil in the US? Is this a threat ultimately to what can emanate from Africa? Yes, it is a threat, but I don't think it's one that really should be exaggerated. I mean, when you look at growth in the oil industry today, the growth is coming from the emerging markets. It's South America, it's um, Asia, it's Africa. Europe is reducing its consumption of oil. The United States is actually reducing its consumption of oil. And the growth rates coming out from us is, is very high. Look, African growth rate is 6 7%. We'll certainly see a, a, a substantial increase in consumption locally. And the, and the same principle applies, applies to Asia. So w in our case, the local market is critical. Um, we import over a billion tons of gasoline into Nigeria a month. We would like to you know, produce it and refine it for our local markets eventually. Um, one of the key areas we're investing heavily in is in gas infrastructure. We flare more gas in Nigeria than it's required to, to power the whole continent. And what's been missing is the infrastructure, the pipeline infrastructure to actually take gas from the producing fields to our market, our local market. We have a first class LNG plant that exports to 27 million tons a year, but we, yet we don't have pipelines which will cost 10% of the overall cost of the, of the LNG plant to build look simple infrastructure because the foreign investors want to export. So it takes African businessmen, if you ask me, African enterprises to understand that we do need to support and finance intra-African trade and that's what, what, what the infrastructure development is, is, is all about. Wally, what about investor sentiment towards Nigeria here at Davos? Have you received a good reception? Excellent. I think it's an excellent reception. If you look at it from this point of view that you know, we, we, would, we had a business interaction group today. We've had, you know, stable democracy for the last 16 years. Governments have handed over without a shot being fired. Um, we've, we've settled our differences in courts, in election tribunals, where we, where we should do it. So we have a very civilized policy. We have an environment today in Nigeria where the, you know, the, the, the president deals with an active opposition. And the opposition is not even other parties. The opposition is from within his party to ensure he does things ha as he's supposed to do. We've done, we've liberalized, we've privatized the economy. The last part of our economy that's still under public sector arms, the power sector, we're going through a, 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 a liberalization program. And opportunities are being created. Created Most of all, over 50% of all the new jobs created is private sector initiatives, small businesses. So, I mean, I mean, I think the reception has been really good. Uh, we, Can you give us any insight into who you've been speaking to, poten potential investors into Orlando? Um, yes, I have been speaking to a couple of funds, and there quite have been. There's been a, quite a number of funds who have approached me here regarding the opportunities in Nigeria. Also, regional partners like the South Africa, um, all companies out of other regions in Africa who are saying, "Well, how can we get together and do 
you know, they look at opportunities in Nigeria, we look at opportunities in their country. Because there's drilling going on in Liberia, Sierra Leone, over offshore Mozambique, offshore Namibia. It's an exciting time for the oil and gas industry. It's an, also an exciting time for the African continent, if you ask me. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you where you thought the oil price was going. I'm sure regularly you are asked that question. Yeah, I think so. I mean, clearly there is a long-term bearish sentiment that the price will go there. But I think we need to also be remind ourselves about one thing. The world is producing less gas than it is consuming on a daily basis. So there's a reserve replacement uh, equilibrium. Sorry, we do not have a reserve replacement equilibrium. All the new finds, okay, are all deep offshore finds. So a typical deep offshore well will cost about 70 to 90 million dollars. And we're starting to look at the ultra deep. Um, so all our replacement of, of our consumption is being done in a, in a, in a, at three, four times the capital cost as what it used to be before. So I don't see oil prices substantially dropping. I mean, they may be slightly weaker in the long term, but I think we're here for $100 oil for a while.